The FMA IH-63 Pampa has a tangled story. Although numerous misfortunes have put it through the ringer, this advanced trainer and attack jet has played a crucial role in consistently keeping the Argentine military industry up to date for 40 years. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the IA-63, the last survivor of the Falklands War. The IA-63 is the essential element for advanced training of Argentine fighter pilots. It is also the most capable combat jet in Argentina, at least until new second-hand F-16s arrive. The Pampa is the first operational jet designed and produced indigenously in Latin America, although the creation process benefited significantly from German technical assistance. The origin story of the IA-63 dates back to the late 1970s and perfectly summarizes the history of the Argentine Air Force since then. In fact, even before the IA-63, Argentina had long been a pioneer in jet aircraft in Latin America. Following the Second World War, with the assistance of several brilliant German and French aeronautical engineers, the Argentine aviation industry experienced significant advancements. Thus, the country developed and produced Latin America's first jet fighter, the IAE-27 Pulki-1, as well as the first swept-wing jet fighter, the IAE-33 Pulki-2. However, neither of them reached the stage of serial production. The IAE-37 supersonic delta-wing interceptor could not even make its maiden flight. Although none of these 1950s dreams had been finalized, 20 years later, Argentina took one more step toward domestic jet aircraft. In the mid-1970s, the Argentine Air Force began seeking a new advanced jet trainer to replace its Morin Solnier MS-760s, of which 50 had been produced under license. In 1975, Fabrica Militar de Aviones, shortly FMA, began developing a new aircraft, the IA-60, which would not only replace the jet trainers, but also complement and eventually replace the A-4 Skyhawks. However, the project was cancelled in 1975 due to the insufficient number of specialized personnel available to meet the planned design deadlines. Two years later, FMA initiated a new study for a new aircraft. This time, the company first examined a suitable power plant. Two possible candidates were the Garrett TFE-731 and the Pratt & Whitney JT-15D-5. However, the latter had not yet been certified. Therefore, FMA continued with the TFE-731 to avoid any delays. Additionally, this engine also powered the Learjet 35 of the Argentine Air Force, which would reduce the logistical burden and ease the workload of the ground crew. After this stage was completed, the company began design works in 1979, but its technical capabilities were insufficient for such an endeavor. Thus, the German Dornier was introduced into the program and new machinery was ordered. After selecting one of the seven considered alternative designs, the full-scale development phase commenced, involving wind tunnel testing and extensive use of computer-aided design. Then the construction of the three prototypes commenced locally, while Dornier manufactured the wings and tail assemblies. However, Argentina lost the Falklands War in 1982, and the military junta collapsed in 1983, which sparked a prolonged period of economic and political instability. Although this caused some delays, the program progressed as smoothly as possible. Even before the start of the flight tests, the Argentine Air Force had already ordered a series of 18 IA-63s. Three airframes were completed in 1983. The first prototype made its maiden flight on October 6, 1984. It was showcased at the Le Bourget Air Show in 1985. However, after that, progress lost its momentum and the IA-63 could not enter service until 1995. The second fighter-bomber squadron received the first aircraft. Although Israel, Canada and Mexico expressed interest in the jet during the 1980s and 1990s, no export success was achieved. Its Pampa 2000 variant participated in the joint primary aircraft training system competition for the US Air Force and Navy, but lost to the T-6 Texan II a license-built version of the Pilatus PC-9. In 2019, Guatemala ordered two Pampa 3s, which promptly sparked a corruption investigation in the country, ultimately leading to the cancellation of the purchase. Therefore, Argentina remained as the sole operator of the IA-63. 
Although it closely resembles the Alpha Jet, which was jointly designed and produced by Dassault and Donier, the IA-63 has several significant differences. First, it is smaller than the Franco-German jet trainer. The single-engine Pampa also features straight, supercritical DOA-7, DOA-8 airfoil wings instead of the swept wings found on the twin-engine Alpha Jet. The fuselage features a semi-monocoque design. The airframe is mainly made of aluminum alloys, with fiber used for components such as the air intakes, which are fitted with thermal deicers. The two-spar wing has a negative dehydral of 3 degrees. The relative core thickness is 14.5% at the wing root and 12.5% at the tip. The aircraft is equipped with an 11.5 kW Lear Sigler 400 electric generator for avionics, which also functions as the starter. The fuel system ensures that the engine can operate under negative overload for 10 seconds. The two-seat AI-63 Pampa has a length of 10.93 meters, a wingspan of 9.69 meters, and a height of 4.29 meters. Its wing area is 15.63 square meters. The aircraft's empty and maximum takeoff weights are 2,821 and 5,000 kilograms, respectively. One 15.57 kN Honeywell TFE 731 22N turbofan engine provides a top speed of 819 km per hour. The aircraft's range is 1,500 km. Its service ceiling is 12,900 meters, in other words, 42,300 feet. The IA-63 can be equipped with a 30mm Dofa auto cannon or four 7.62mm machine guns in a pod, as well as five hardpoints. The aircraft can carry rocket pods and bombs. As previously mentioned, the Pampa 2000 variant was jointly developed with the US companies Watt and Laurel to compete in the Joint Primary Aircraft Training System program for the US Air Force and Navy. It was equipped with a TFE 731-22B engine and featured Bendix King avionics. However, the aircraft lost the competition. Argentina also conducted design work on a carrier-based version of the Pampa. However, the project was deemed economically unfeasible and was terminated. In 1995, Argentina privatized FMA, and from that year until 2009, it operated under a concession with Lockheed Martin Aircraft Argentina SA, shortly LMA ASA, a subsidiary of Lockheed Martin. This company also worked on some modernization programs. In 1997, LMA ASA announced a new program to create an improved version of the jet called the Pampa New Generation, or Pampa NG. Its A variant would serve as an advanced trainer, while the B version, featuring a more powerful engine, would function as a light attack aircraft. The Pampa NG would be equipped with a GPS navigation system, a head-up display in the front cockpit, hands-on throttle, and stick flight control system, as well as a digital computerized weapons control system. The B variant would also include multifunction displays, a laser rangefinder, and an infrared chafan flare dispenser. It could launch air-to-surface and anti-ship missiles. However, the troubled economy of Argentina blocked the continuation of this project. LMA ASA also developed the modernized AT-63 version known as the Pampa 2, which made its maiden flight on June 25, 2005. This project successfully overcame the budget constraints and Argentina converted 12 former aircraft to Pampa 2 standards, while also ordering 6 newly built machines. After modernization, which has reduced operating and maintenance costs, the jet has enhanced its combat capabilities while retaining advanced training features. The Pampa 2 utilizes a 16.5 kN Honeywell TFE 731-2C turbofan engine. It includes a mission computer, video recorder, head-up display, multifunction displays, and an advanced navigation system. The jet, whose weapon capacity has increased from 1.16 tons to 1.5 tons, can fire air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles. Although the AT-63 modernization program included the optional integration of a radar, radar warning receiver and chef launchers, the Argentine Air Force has not chosen any of these systems. Later, these 18 aircraft were re-engined with the Honeywell TFE 731-42N turbofan, which offers 20% more thrust and were redesignated as the Pampa 240. In 2009, Argentina nationalized LMA ASA and changed its name to Fabrica Argentina de Aviones SA or FADEA.
Four years later, the company announced it was developing the new Pompa 3 variant. Naturally, a lengthy delay also occurred in this project due to rampant inflation and a severe recession the country experienced. The first prototype made its maiden flight on August 18, 2015 and was officially unveiled on September 18 of the same year. Finally, Buenos Aires allocated the necessary budget for the continuation of the program in 2016 and ordered three additional aircraft in 2018. The first serial production Pampa 3, which made its maiden flight on September 21, 2018, was delivered to the Argentine Air Force on October 19, 2018. Currently, six jets are stationed at the 6th Fighter Group in Tandil. Argentina plans to expand the number to a full squadron of 12. The Pampa 3 features two additional digital multifunction displays and integrated Targo helmet mounted displays. The final Pampa 3 Block 2 variant features embedded virtual avionics manufactured by Albert Systems. It enables communication between air data computer, hands on throttle and stick flight controls, multifunction displays, and helmet mounted displays, generating a high fidelity simulation of advanced avionics, sensors, and armament. The embedded virtual avionics also enhance capabilities with a multi-part spin training thanks to data link compatibility. Currently, the 10th Air Brigade of the Argentine Air Force in Rio Gallegos operates six Pampa 3 Block 2s. We must acknowledge that the IA-63 had significant potential in the international market and offered numerous opportunities for the future of the Argentine aviation industry. In our TAM and IA-58 Pucara videos, we referred them as missed opportunities. Same circumstances have also placed the IA-63 in a similar position. Therefore, we will refrain from mentioning them again to avoid repetition to keep our video short and sweet. Let's analyze the impact of the Pampa on the current Argentine aviation industry. Despite the political and economic instabilities that arose after the Falklands War, Argentina remained committed to the IA-63 program. The mid-1980s were still hopeful times for the Argentines. They even initiated the FMASA IA-90 fourth generation fighter project in collaboration with Dornier, which was ultimately cancelled due to budget cuts. However, in addition to gaining computerized design capabilities thanks to the IA-63, FMA acquired state-of-the-art machinery for its time. Efforts to keep the IA-63 up to date have also been a driving force behind keeping the Argentine aviation industry current. Regardless of their success in business, all modernization projects added new capabilities to the company and prevented the waste of skilled human resources. At least the most possible way. And as we see in the Guatemalan sale, the aircraft still has potential in the international market. From these perspectives, the Pampa project can be regarded as highly beneficial and successful. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.